Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so part two of the Yano Estacado wines. Um, so these are gonna be the higher end wines. I figured I'd put the, the under 20 or the 20 and under wines together and I'll put the over $20 wines together um, because that way I'm kind of, it's almost like apples to apples instead of apples to bananas instead of oranges. Anyway, um, so I love bananas. Uh, I like oranges too. Uh, anyway. So let's just get into it. Uh, again, uh, so recap, Jason uh, from Yano gave me these wines um, after, you know, while I was up there uh, interviewing him and I told him that, you know, I hadn't gotten my samples yet. Not that I was asking for them, but I was talking about, yeah, I usually get samples, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, well, I'll give you some stuff. So anyway, so let's just get into it. I started everything. All right, so this is the 2017 Yano Essicado. Vino Verde Tinto, Texas High Plains. Boom, here you go, a little bit close up on that. So this is, is a red wine. So it's got Graciano, uh, Tinta Caum, because it's C-A with a little tilde O, so it's Caum, not Tinta Cow. Uh, Tempranillo and Torriga Nacional, which is like the main grape of port, kind of, for the most part. So um, this retails for 25 five dollars if i remember correctly i looked it up yet and um i'm excited because you don't you don't see a lot of you know i mean i know this is a texas uh vino verde oh i was supposed to go upstairs and get the cartridge looks like i'm doing okay so a cartridge is supposed to give you about 15 glasses of wine so one two three four five I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I use this for almost for what? Yeah, we're we're almost done. Ugh, there we go. I haven't had full glasses, but I I probably put it like the equivalent of 15 glasses, or you know, almost whatever. Anyway, let's just get into it. So I get this kind of um, almost dried raspberry. Not quite dry, but like, it's not like really, really ripe and fresh raspberry. It's like, it's like the raspberry maybe have sat out, not, not kind of dried a little bit. Not like sat out and got like, like, uh, you know, rotten. Not like that, but kind of a little dried out. Yeah, but I also get like kind of this you walked into an antique shop so you're getting like all the wood um a little bit of the dust a little bit of the um uh, uh like potpourri almost um like a little dry flower yeah i mean i get i get like that like you've walked into a somewhat older antique shop, like out in the country of Texas. Like actually it makes it, it kind of reminds me of when my dad and I went out to um, Marfa in that part of West Texas. And we actually stopped in uh, Fort Davis. And there was like this like this little set of shops on the side of the road. And we were just trying to kill time. And it kind of reminds me of walking into those shops. So you get a little bit of the dust, you get a little, you know, like fabric, yeah, like 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 fabric and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. So not a lot of um, fruit on it. It's there, but not a lot of it. It's more earth driven rather than fruit driven.
it's probably somewhat of a I, kind of a subtle one. I was trying to think of how I was going to describe it while I was tasting it. It's not in your face. Um, the fruit's coming through a little bit more. The fruit is like a more kind of a fresher red fruit, uh, more more raspberry, a touch of cranberry. Um, the earthiness is not as prominent as it is on the nose. Um, I don't I don't smell fabric or I don't taste fabric, um, but I do taste a little bit of the dried fruit, a little bit of the earthiness, um, kind of like that wood. The tannin isn't like killing me. Um, I want to say even the alcohol isn't doesn't really seem to be like super high. Thirteen percent. That's an awesome alcohol right there. Um, yeah, it feels that the wine's in balance on everything. Um, is it like super spectacular? No, but I think it's a super nice wine to drink. Like I could drink the wine on its own which I always love when I find wines I can drink on their own because I, I like just to drink wine sometimes. Actually, a lot of times. Um, you pair it with some food, though, I think that's going to enhance the wine. Like, I think the wine's kind of just kind of hanging out going, hey, man, um, I'm ready to party. Who's going who's gonna to party with me? And depending on who's joining the party, you know, a certain personality is going to come out of the wine. Um, otherwise, wine's going to be like, man, I'm just going to be chill. We're gonna hang out. If you just want to drink, we're good, man. So that's that's kind of my impression about the wine. All right, wine number two. Hey, I remember to say it this time. So uh, we've got the 2016 THP. It actually stands for Texas Hocus Pocus. And watch the interview with Jason. He'll explain what that means. Uh, Texas High Plains. It just so happens that THP is Texas High Plains also, or same initials. Uh, San Giovese. This is. Um, oh yeah, I didn't look at the back to see if it gave us the percentages. Or you're on the front. So on this one, this is Sangiovese. It is 75% Sangiovese, 25% Cabernet Sauvignon. So super excited about Italian varieties in Texas because they tend to do very well. Um, and this is a it's a cool little um, combination you don't really see very often, like ever. Well, you do you do in Tuscany, super Tuscans, but usually it's not seventy five percent Sanjo and twenty five percent Cab. It's usually like seventy five percent Cab, and maybe like a couple percent of Sangiovese. But they can do it. Sorry, uh, this also retails for twenty five dollars. Yes, twenty five dollars. So I get a little more spice driven on this. like um, cinnamon, clove. So you're getting some oak influence here. There's even like, there's even like a browning on it. I mean, like a Chianti, like, like an actual Sangiovese. Here, let's get some white paper underneath. I mean, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a brownish red color. So if I was looking at this and I didn't know any better, I would think that this might be an old world wine. So I don't know if uh, I don't know if the micro oxygenation, the microx uh, that they showed me or Jason showed me when I was out there. I don't know if he's getting a little extra in there to kind of give it more oxidation. But yeah, um, it, the fruits fairly tart borderline sour not not a bad sour like a sour cherry type of thing not sour like you know it's got va in it like italian wines have you know not like you know it's like ugh, sour vinegary but like like a like a sour cherry and i actually do get a touch of tar wow a little earth, a little tar. And a little bit of burn 
from alcohol. I don't know if it's high alcohol or not. 13.8, it's not, not terribly high. Let's take, ooh. I got a touch of like chocolate on it. Lots of tart fruit on this. Um, it's not as much cherry as it is like raspberry, strawberry, um, but it's fairly red fruit dominant for me. Um, acidity is really nice. Sangiovese is a high acid grape. Um, so the acidity is really nice on this. Um, I don't get as much earthiness though on, on the palate as I did on the nose. This is a candidate for um, wine for tomorrow night. Uh, we're having some Italian food, Sangiovese, or I may just bust out the Italian wine that I reviewed recently, um, or both of them. I don't know. I think this is gonna appeal to the palate of the people that are coming over tomorrow better than the Italian wine, because the Italian wine, I think, is a little funky. Um, it wasn't that funky. Um, but they're, they're actually, were actually that, that the, the one that I have left over, that one, if I remember, was a little bit earthier, and the one I, I crushed was a little more fruit forward. This is similar to that other one. I like it. It's a good one. It's $25. It's kind of up there for me as far as how it tastes and what I'm getting out of it. But I think with food, it'll it'll be like, yeah, man, 25 bucks is right there. Like, I think it's like, would be just the right price point. I like it. It's kind of, but even though I said the fruit was a little bit riper, it, it's kind of still kind of tart. I like it. It's good. Okay, I'm not floored and overwhelmed with it, but I like it. All right, so let's move on to this last wine here. Wine number three. This is the 2015 Viviano. Cabernet Sauvignon Sangiovese, so another blend of these two grapes, and this retails, retails for $35. This wine has been on the show at least once or twice before, and I remember liking it, being like surprised. Um, so it doesn't have the percentages on here that I can see. Yeah, I don't see any percentages on here. So, um, heavier bottle, cooler looking bottle. This is like, you know, like the one, looks like the one wine in their portfolio that looks no, nothing like anything else. Okay, yeah, there are some variations in labels, but. All right, let's see how this is, as I remember liking it in the past. And this has definitely got a little bit of age to it. It says a 15. When Jason handed this bottle to me, he goes, yeah, ha go ahead and, you know, review it. I was like, yeah. Now, sometimes, you know, you remember, you remember things better than they really were. Or you sometimes remember them being worse. So let's check it out. So, so this one had that little bit of browning to it. This one definitely has it too. Um, so again, I don't know if it's a micro-oxygenation or it actually is somewhat of the aging because it's, you know, a 15 versus a 16 or 17 or 18. Um, definitely a little dull in character. Yeah. So right off the bat, I get definitely more complexity to it. There's a little more balance to this. Um, you're getting oak aromas. I mean, I'm getting more of a clove, a touch of vanilla, 
Not a lot of cinnamon, but a little bit of cinnamon to it. Sorry, sometimes, you know, that stuff happens. Um, yeah, like the cinnamon, almost like a red hot. And um, like a savoriness to it. Almost like a barbecue sauce. Dare I say, there might be even a hint of VA in this. But yeah, the fruit is really not prominent. Um, it's more smoky, dusty, earth-driven, spice-driven. The fruit is really not, not, the, not the driving force on this wine. I mean, let's put it this way. If I was giving this in a blind, my initial reaction is this is maybe old world, but I'm not quite sure, okay? Or it's from Texas. Buy this wine. It's 35 bucks. Buy it. It's good. I re now I remember why. I, this is pretty much my favorite wine from Yano that I, I've had on a somewhat regular basis. This really tastes like an Italian wine, to be honest. I mean, like a Super Tuscan. And I'm not saying it's going to replace that. I mean, it's not as Italian-like as Italian wines normally are, but... Uh, the tannins are really coming through right now. Um, it's really more non-fruit driven than fruit driven. It tastes like an old world wine. Um, this is a great food wine. I mean, this might be the lead candidate for tomorrow's dish. We're having Brajol, which, you know, this might be the wine I pull out. Especially because I to, to like give the, you know, like our guests like, hey, you should try some Texas wine that's pretty awesome. Now, I don't know if they're going to like it or not, but I'm going to like it. There's almost like a, a stewed fruit, like a dried out fruit, um, almost like an, uh, a Valpolicella quality to it. Um, so the fruit's kind of kind of over not overripe but desiccated. That's the word I'm looking for. But it's like black fruit and red fruit. So I've been seeing a lot of red fruit recently over the, all these last <laughs> couple of wines and the wines before. But the black fruit starting to come through on this, like a black raspberry, a blackberry, um, even a touch of blueberry. Um, there's a richness to the fruit. Like I said, it's, it's, it tasted right now. At first, it was like it's kind of dried. Uh, desiccated, but now the fruit characters are coming through as a little bit of ripe. So maybe like an overripe, raisinated type of thing. But yeah. It's totally tasty. It tastes old world. And Texas at the same time. All right. So um, that's going to do it for this episode. Click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to uh, find out more about Yano Escato. You can, wherever the donate button is, hit the donate button. Send me to Oregon. and um, Or help me in my trip to Oregon. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.